welcome to a very special Big Fat Quiz in which we look back at the sights, sounds, people and places of the Naughties, or as I still insist on calling them, the Ooh. <laughs> the Naughties was a terrible nickname to give a decade, as I was just saying the other day to my mate's fart monster and dick splash. <laughs> Now, millions of you auditioned to be on tonight's Big Fat Quiz, and after two rounds of eliminations and a gruelling month at boot camp, <laughs> let's meet our six finalists. First up, he was born and raised on the mean streets of Glasgow, and now he can never go back because he's been seen sitting with Alan Carr. <laughs> it's getting Bridges and Alan Carr! <laughs> Next up, putting the soul into Northern Soul, it's Sarah Millican, <laughs> and taking the chic out of Geek Chic, it's David Mitchell. And finally, if you were trying to put together the ultimate pub quiz dream team, then these two would be literally the last people you'd call. It's Noel Fielding and Richard Iwadi. <laughs> have you got have you got team names, Alan Kevin? <clears throat> we're gonna go for Big Gay Al and his big Scottish pal. <laughs> <laughs> he came up with that by himself, yeah. I didn't even have a say in that. <laughs> I did spend a couple of attempts trying to get Bridges and Carl. Carl's on Bridges puns. Yeah, and then yeah, but that was shit. Back to... <laughs> you don't want to see the car coming across the bridges, do you? <laughs> <laughs> That's where they were going with it. No, it wasn't. <laughs> That's where I was going. <laughs> Sarah, David, have you got, have you got a, a team name? We'd like to be called Team Three, please. <laughs> not be any less convenient. You could be Team One, or people could imagine a brilliant Team One that can't be televised for legal reasons. Well, some department stores start at ground floor, some of them start at one, and it really messes you up, so that's what we're doing to you. Wow. <laughs> Richard and Noel, have you got a, a team name? The Indoor Kites. <laughs> imagine how indoor kites work as well. I mean, what propels them? I imagine... I imagine it's jealousy. <laughs> or rage. Or just hot shame. <laughs> hot shame. Hot shame's another Maybe good name for a band. Hot shame. Hot, can we be hot shame? Hot shame. <laughs> hot shame. Okay. Yeah. Hot shame. And the indoor kites. <laughs> <laughs> OK, where, where were you at the beginning of this decade? Kevin, what, what were you doing? Um, I was at a street party. I was 13. I think I got my first can of beer. I can't believe how young... You were 13 in the year 2000. You will, you'll live through this. This is all your formative yeah, years, yeah. is this decade. It's been a tough decade. <laughs> Alan, what were you doing? Oh, I was working in a, a call centre. Bartley card lost and stolen. Still got it. <laughs> Sarah, where were you in the year 2000? Um, I was in the middle of a loveless marriage. Woohoo! But I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I knew I was married. <laughs> I hadn't been duped. <laughs> David, where, where were you in the year 2000? I think I was an unsuccessful comedian. You weren't the other half of this loveless marriage, were you? <laughs> this, this is the worst bookings disaster we've ever had. <laughs> Richard, any idea where you were? I was at home. <laughs> For the whole year? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I was. I, I actually recorded an entire series of Friends and edited out all the adverts. <laughs> Manually. That's VCR. And that's pausing, waiting, <laughs> unpausing. <laughs> and that saves on the DVD purchase. So, that's what I did. Well, well good, good news, Sarah, we found something more depressing yeah. than your answer. It's <laughs> a bit of luck there, what were the chances? No, no, where, where were you at the, at the turn of the century? I don't, I've no idea, Jimmy, I don't know where... I don't know where I was this morning, so I'm not going to remember where I was in the... <laughs> Right, let's get to it. The first round is all about news headlines, so let's remind ourselves what happened. The noughties was the decade when we lost faith in MPs. The expenses scandal hit. Some MPs claimed they were being victimised. God, they'll claim for anything, won't they? <laughs> Jackie Smith's husband spent taxpayers' money on porno movies. He tried to cover up what he'd been doing by putting a cushion over his lap. <laughs> Using taxpayers' money for porn, terrible. I'd be livid if I paid a bit more tax. The credit crunch threw the future of the euro into doubt. In Spain, they were so racked with anxiety, many people could barely get off to sleep in the afternoon. <laughs> of course, it wouldn't be a quiz without questions, right? Eyes down, here's your first round. The naughty started with an audacious heist at the newly opened Millennium Dome 
What were they trying to steal? It was properly like a James Bond style heist. This is we write this down now, isn't it? This, this is the, the quiz. The talking is over. <laughs> the exam has begun. <laughs> someone audacious. Was audacious. No, there wasn't someone audacious. It was. It was an audacious heist. The heist was audacious. Thank you. Can a totally unaudacious person do an audacious heist? Oh, he's dropped a logic bomb. This is so out of character for me. Our next question comes from a very special guest, the star of one of the biggest uh, shows of the decade. It's Greg Wallace, everyone. Greg Wallace. Hello, Jimmy. Now, you know how much I love foreign cuisine, but I was so angry when the American House of Representatives changed the name of French fries. They did it because the French protested against the war in Iraq in 2003. But what did they change the name to? <laughs> <laughs> I love him. <laughs> what is not to love? Yeah. He's a green grocer, isn't he? <laughs> Is it one of the responsibilities of the House of Representatives in America to name all the foods? <laughs> I didn't realise that was their system. Because that must take up a lot of their time, legislatively speaking. Sort of go, we've got to think of a name for all these vegetables and sauces and dips. <laughs> as the Republicans want to call apples bastards. Yeah. <laughs> the Democrats have to fight that to stop that. I think I'd want to call it apples bastards. Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's an excellent really policy. Like them. <laughs> Just a toffee bastard. Hmm? To ask for a toffee <laughs> bastard at a fairground <laughs> would make me very, very happy indeed. A toffee bastard is a much better name for a toffee apple because <laughs> they sort of are bastards. Are we right? Well, so yeah, then... because you get round the nice bit and then it just goes to shit in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Um, from July 2007, what could you only do in a few select places, including bus shelters, prison cells and designated rooms on oil rigs? Have you got something? Yeah, we All do. Right. All right. Sort of. <laughs> now, it wouldn't be a big fat Everyone's quiz without the amazingly talented children of Mitchell Brook Primary School in Neesden and their unconventional school plays. Yeah, They've acted out one of the biggest news stories of the noughties for us. Have a look and write down what you think the story is. Welcome back to our show about questions. <laughs> this is your last question for lots of buddies. What is your final answer? Hmm, let me think. A. I mean, B. <laughs> C. <coughs> I think it's C. That's the right answer. Yeah! Yeah! Congratulations, here's your money. <laughs> Wait a minute. That man was helping him. Oh no! Give me that back. You're a naughty cheater. Come with <laughs> a remarkable play there. So what, what I need to do is, what's the story? And I need the name of the protagonist. What the hell have you written there? <laughs> Hieroglyphics. <laughs> I can't even see what it is. Kevin is slightly blown away by the technology. <laughs> <laughs> OK, final question in this first round. America was devastated by 9-11, but what did President George W. Bush continue to read after being informed of the attacks? <laughs> it's a big fat quiz, so we go straight to the answers. Does everyone go everything? <laughs> uh, the problem children, Richard and Noel? Hey. Well, yeah. <laughs> Come on, don't be hostile. <laughs> Have you got five answers? It's, yeah, it's a real shame. Why? Why, Jimmy? <laughs> Why? <laughs> We're taking it serious this um, time. OK, as long as you... As long as you're... Got my serious hat on. Such a shame. We... <laughs> <laughs> OK, I asked you what a gang of thieves tried to steal from the newly opened Millennium Dome. What did you put? Kevin? Let him take the fall for that. I thought they'd stolen the actual dome. <laughs> Well, that would certainly be audacious. <laughs> Have you seen it since? <laughs> uh, Richard, no, what did you get for this? The concept of audacity. <laughs> I didn't agree with that, so I'd wrote Aswad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, the reggae band. <laughs> I'm familiar with their work, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so... We all are, we're not idiots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he makes a very good point. Um, we could uh, have written diamonds, but, you know... Uh, David, we, Sarah. We, we did write diamonds. Yeah. <laughs> well, I will accept diamonds. They actually tried to steal the Millennium Star Diamond. Have a look at it. Oh. Look at that. oh. They tried to steal so you got it right. Point to Sarah and David. <laughs> first, first one out of the way. Great. <laughs> OK, Greg Wallace asked you what the US House of Representatives renamed French fries in the run up to the Iraq War. What did you all put? Potato ones. Potato. <laughs> 
I wanted to say potato wangers, but Rich said no. <laughs> it's a family show. It's a family though. show. It's a family quiz, yeah, Jim. I was going to say, chaps, that's what I called fries during the Iraq war. <laughs> <laughs> You knew this one. What did you go for on? Freedom fries. Sarah, David, you... We've got freedom fries as well. Did they change everything? Did they change, like, fillet of fish? <laughs> but it's old fish. So it's sort of a bit French and a bit Irish. Yeah, fillet <laughs> old fish. <laughs> well, the Irish is... it's, a, it's fusion cuisine, isn't it? Fillet <laughs> 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 no, It was the most fruitile political gesture. Yes, fruitile. <laughs> Kevin Allen, you got that right. Sarah, David, you got that right. Two points there, no point for potato wands. What could you only do in bus shelters, prison cells and designated rooms on oil rigs from July 2007 onwards? Uh, did you all get this? Eventually. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's when you said the bus shelters, I thought it must be fuck then. <laughs> but then David corrected me that you're not supposed to fuck in bus shelters. <laughs> Changed it to smoke. You got you got this, Alan, Kevin? Well, I remember, because everyone of my mates used to smoke, cos I would always just be sat in the pub myself and they're outside. So I was on the gum in the patches trying to start smoking. <laughs> after the smoking ban. <laughs> Richard and Noel, what did you think people wouldn't be able to do? Kung after... Fu. <laughs> and you can't anymore. <laughs> they ruin everything, don't they? But it's PC gone mad, isn't it? It is. <laughs> OK, the children of Mitchell Brook Primary School performed one of their school plays. What news story did you think it was about? David and Sarah, what have you got? Um, we've got the, the coffin major, um, but then you asked for the name of the protagonist, so we wrote Chris Tarrant. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to give you points for, for that. That's the guy cheating on who wants to be a millionaire. Yeah. Uh, major Charles Ingram. Kevin decided to write just the lower half of the sentence. The it's answer. supposed to say coughing cheat. I don't know where I lost it. I think after the G. I think the C, love. <laughs> uh, Richard and Noel, what did you go for there? Uh, this is... Go for it. The Manchurian Candidate. <laughs> <laughs> There's a scene towards the start, which is... It's like a flat... It's a flat towards the start? Yeah. <laughs> Not towards the end? No. <laughs> towards the start? Well it's, well, it's a flashback structure. Right. So, is it the start, <laughs> is it the end? One of the questions... <laughs> And the guy in the audience who was coughing, his name was Tequin. And I thought, if you're going to get somebody on your team that potentially knows everything, it's a guy called Tequin. <laughs> Every time you laugh, I can't believe that's your laugh. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a goose being interfered with. Do you remember when you first laughed and did it frighten you? It did freak me out a little bit. It was weird, cos people looked at me in a weird way when yeah. I laughed. Did you right. think for about two years it's someone else laughing? <laughs> then you saw a mirror and went, oh, shit, that's me. <laughs> Finally, I asked you uh, what George W. Bush was reading on 9-11. What have you put? No, we'll go yeah, for... Well, Fifty Shades of Grey, he's feeling a bit horny, and then he heard oh. the news, but he had just kept on going. <laughs> Sarah and David, you went with? Um, the Hungry Caterpillar, cos he's learning to read. Um... <laughs> one we all start off on. I, I, Richard and Noel, you went with? Super Ted. <laughs> I can tell you, you're all wrong that he was reading to a group of children and he was reading a book called The Pet Goat. Mm. He was informed what happened and he continued to read. I think we should get a point because it was a children's book. <laughs> uh, I think we should get a point as well because the little goat's well horny. <laughs> <laughs> it gets me off. That's a dirty little goat. <laughs> At the end of the first round, let's take a look at the scores. Kevin and Alan have three points. Uh, Sarah and David have four points. Richard and Noel have no points so far. Yes. So far. <laughs> See you after the break. Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of the Noughties. This round is all about music and what a decade it was for music. Sadly, in 2009, Michael Jackson died. R.I.P. Do. <laughs> There was a lot of violence in and around the UK garage music scene. I was actually in So Solid Crew for a while until MC Harvey thought I was getting too close to Lisa Mafia, and I was like, what's poppin', rude boy? And he just flipped into flip mode, blazed me, called me a perpetrator. I explained that while she's some nan gash, I was just flossing my cleek, spitting my flows, but he wanted to jack me, so I gave him a couple of tumps, still thugging, can't even touch me for real. <laughs> Is Nan 
a good thing. <laughs> well, Nangash is a very good thing. And then, Sarah, I would describe you as a, a lovely piece of Nangash. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Darcy. <laughs> OK, <laughs> we'll kick off with some music questions for you now. Garage icon Craig David had a number one hit in 2000 with Seven Days, in which he described a very busy week in meticulous detail. What was in his schedule that week? I'll give you a clue. He squeezed four things into those seven days. Um, was there a rest day? There was a rest day. There was that a rest day. One of the... Do we need that's to write when he four, chilled, down. wasn't it? He chilled. Well, get that down. Rest he ch day. Oh, he ch chilled. Yeah. No, don't, don't, don't say, say it out loud. To There's everyone that he chilled on Sunday. I need to say aloud so I know what the thing is. <laughs> Took a for a drink. Or... You need to sing the wrong <laughs> 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 Some on a Wednesday. <laughs> And for our next question, we're going over to the Channel 4 newsroom where Jon Snow Put is reporting on one of the decade's biggest hits. But which song is he talking about? Let's have a look. Over to you, Jon. A 43-year-old Jamaican-American man appeared in court today in an attempt to overturn a divorce ruling despite his partner submitting photographic evidence of his infidelity. The pictures show the defendant butt-naked with a neighbour banging on the bathroom floor. <laughs> his ex-wife claims she also witnessed the pair kissing on the sofa before making love on the counter and subsequently in the shower. <laughs> when pressed, the man said he had forgotten giving the woman an extra key to his apartment and denied that he had been caught red-handed, creeping with the girl next door. <laughs> That's you, Jill. OK, uh, next, have you all got something for that? Oh, right, yeah. OK, so what, what, uh, what song was he... Come on, we're expecting you to do well here, Noel. It's a music quiz, come on. It's a specialist area. OK, which chart-topping artist had a TV commercial censored following complaints that it was possible to see both his penis and scrotum? No. <laughs> I think it's Lady Gaga, Jimmy. <laughs> it, is, it is not Lady Gaga. Oh, I thought it was, cos she's like half rice, half <laughs> chips, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> which sexuality is rice and which one is chips? I would say chips is heterosexual and rice is homosexual. Yeah. <laughs> Surely couscous is gay, rice isn't gay. <laughs> <laughs> courgettes are homophobic. I know, courgettes are just the right size. <laughs> <laughs> what a lovely marketing campaign for courgettes. <laughs> <laughs> just the right size. <laughs> Take it to mean whatever you like. <laughs> <laughs> and our final music question is from none other than Hard Rockin, Naughty's heartthrobs, McFly. Hi, Jimmy. McFly here. Now, one of the biggest musical upsets of the decade was caused by Justin Timberlake, who sparked outrage when he exposed Janet Jackson's bejeweled nipple during the Super Bowl in 2004. But what phrase did Timberlake and Jackson use to describe the mishap? Jimmy, what was the question? Because I was distracted that that clearly wasn't all of McFly. <laughs> Sorry, you were distracted that that wasn't all of McFly? No, it wasn't Are the all others of McFly? dead? <laughs> the other members are not dead. Well, don't introduce it as McFly then, because it's not. It's half McFly. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right, that last question was from half of McFly. <laughs> Write some answers. I asked for Craig David's schedule. Kevin, take us through your answer. Met a girl, took her for a drink, oh. made love times three, <laughs> and then he rested on the Sabbath day. What, what have you got, Sarah and David? We've got uh, met the girl, took a drink, uh, took for a drink, had sex, uh, then morning after pill, <laughs> then you have to go home for clean pants, uh, and then a nap. <laughs> <laughs> no, Richard, what did you know of his schedule? Well, Chilled meetings. We didn't do it in order. I mean, because it started, what, <laughs> Tuesday? What's yeah, this? No, okay. well, Wednesday through Saturday, but yeah, yeah I Wednesday through Tuesday. Saturday, and rehydrated, so that was a drink. <laughs> Rehydrated is definitely a drink. Yeah, yeah. and chilled. The meeting, love making, and chilled. even. Uh, I smart. think these guys have got a point, Thank ladies you. and gentlemen. Yeah. This is... <laughs> Did he abduct that girl? Because this sounds like hostile. <laughs> <laughs> it does he, sound a bit like yeah. her. She's missing Wednesday through Saturday. Tired. <laughs> <laughs> His lust slate. He rests on the Sabbath. Probably to do etchings, runes, whatever he does. <laughs> this is a very sad story. You're making this so much more Silence of the Lambs. It is. <laughs> the lyric is he took a, met a girl on Monday, took her a drink on Tuesday, made love with her on Wednesday through to Saturday, and then on Sunday they just chilled. Jimmy, did they, did they find her? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... Did they ever 
to find the girl from off of the Craig yeah, David song? They did, did, but he was yeah. wearing a skin Craig. as a tracksuit. <laughs> John Snow reported on one of the decade's yeah, biggest hits. What did you think it was? <laughs> David, what did you put? Sarah, help me with this answer. Um, this was Shaggy. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, Kevin, any thoughts? It wasn't me. I thought it was Mr Bombastic myself. <laughs> You're my world. Shaggy's an amazing actor, really, because he's had a lot of one-hits. Yeah. Oh, Carolina. Do you remember that one? <laughs> <laughs> I just had a flashback of Bogling. Oh, Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> Should we just hear it again one more time? Let's just have a listen. Hang on, why don't you check, um, yeah, check this, what we've what's got going, going on? on. <laughs> what happened? the facts, people. <laughs> it was me, you've got two right in a row. Yeah, that's well, right. No, actually. <laughs> yeah. Let's have a little listen to Shaggy. But you got me on the counter. Wasn't me. Saw me banging on the sofa. Wasn't me. I even had her in the shower. Wasn't me. She even got me on the I asked you which chart-topping artist had his genitals censored. Any thoughts? Well, but this is a reference to the episode of Points of View, <laughs> in which Terry Wogan, now Sir Terry Wogan's... I, I think it's not unfair to say immense ball sack. <laughs> <laughs> it's clearly, clearly visible, I putting pressure that, yeah. on the crotch of his trousers. <laughs> I remember that episode of Points of View. He had his legs open and you could see Sir Terry's... I've junk. never felt more respect for the man. <laughs> <laughs> you call with... it junk. <laughs> Terry's junk. Yeah, Terry's junk. <laughs> What's more respectful to call Sir Terry's <laughs> cock and balls? Junk. <laughs> Terry's <laughs> chocolate <laughs> orange. <laughs> yeah, and, like, if you want to get into a scrotum, you just tap it on a table. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a nasty mix-up. <laughs> OK, I asked you what chart-topping artist had his genitals censored. Any thoughts? Richard and Noel. You proud of what you've written there? No. <laughs> it definitely wasn't Mark Knopfler. And no. it probably wasn't Tina Turner. <laughs> Over to Kevin and Alan. Well, he Was said it? crazy frog and I... Kevin is exactly right. That's the right answer. Do you want to hear it? It's pretty annoying. <laughs> Make it stop. McFly asked you how Justin Timberlake Half and Janet Jackson... McFly asked us. <laughs> Sorry, my apologies. Stop. Half of McFly... Thank you. Just Stop. Fly. <laughs> Fly asked you how Justin Timberlake and Janet Jackson described the unexpected appearance of Janet's nipple during the Super Bowl halftime show. What did your put? I thought it was wardrobe malfunction. Richard Knoll. We put respectful, but I think we're going to put respectful tit flash. <laughs> Sarah, David? Magic wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> Like Narnia, you know. <laughs> In this case, the nipple was Narnia. <laughs> yes, it was a wardrobe malfunction. I look at his face, he looks horrified. Like, with their family history of plastic surgery, he's probably happy that the tit's not just in his hand. <laughs> it didn't look nice, did it, that tit? It was like a pug dog with a nose ring. Was it? Like... <laughs> right, it's the part of the show where I introduce a mystery guest. All you have to do is guess who they are and how they made the news in the noughties. And remember, you can only ask yes or no questions. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our special guests. <laughs> hey, Hello, boys. Hello, boys. Yeah. These, are our, these are our mystery guests. They very kindly brought their dad along to help. <laughs> ask away. Are you in McFly? <laughs> <laughs> Did you do something on the television? Not really. Um... Say no. No. <laughs> oh, Thanks, the Dad. puppet master there. <laughs> he's not in the street. He's right there to know. It wasn't on was television. It? Okay. Oh, on the internet? Yes. yes. Well, it was yes. on the internet. Oh, it was on the internet. Did you create YouTube? <laughs> no. no. Yeah. These yeah. internet geeks, they get younger and younger. No. <laughs> Did it involve an animal? No. no. Are there things on YouTube that aren't cats, then? <laughs> <laughs> Did it make you happy? Did it make you happy? Uh, no. Did it no. make you ambivalent? <laughs> <laughs> Is this the latest you've stayed up this week? Uh... Yes. Yes. <laughs> Did you get hurt? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay, no further questions. Okay. Let's write down your answers. Okay. Just out of interest, boys, while they're writing something down, if they were at your school, would you, would you hang out with them? Would you play with them? No. No. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're very good boys. Why okay. would we be... We're far too old to be... <laughs> Come on, let's have a look and see what you've got, Kevin and Alan. What, what did you put? YouTube sensations. <laughs> we would keep YouTube. it very vague. <laughs> Sarah and David? Was it, like, the most viewed YouTube clip ever? I think one of them bit the other one or something <laughs> like that, I think. OK, uh, Richard and Noel, what have you got? YouTube, and then in brackets, attacked by baboons. <laughs> <laughs> They're warming to me now. <laughs> you speak their language. <laughs> you think these two were attacked by baboons? No, I think they attacked some baboons. <laughs> Did you boys attack baboons? No. <laughs> you promise? Have you been attacking baboons? No. If you have, it's best that you just admit it now. <laughs> no. We'll hear no more about it. What have you, why did you do that to baboons? I think they didn't. Let's find out who they are. I'm Harry and this is my little brother Charlie who bit my finger. And you are right. So Sarah and David get the point there. But should we should we just should we relive the clip? Should we have a little look at the clip? This is the most viewed 450 million views. Have a look. <laughs> Charlie. Charlie bit me. end of the part now, so I've got to do the scores. Would you mind doing the scores? They're just written on the front. Could you just run around and tell, tell me who's got what? <laughs> they've got seven, yeah, they've, they've got, got eight, eight, and they've, they've got, got two. two. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, boys. We'll see you after the break. Thank you very much indeed. Bye. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> no, don't find me. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you do that? Charlie! Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz. The next round is all about how we lived our lives in the noughties, the fads and fashions. A trend started in the noughties for wearing charity wristbands to show support for a variety of good causes. Yellow ones for testicular cancer, blue ones for anti-bullying, and two metal ones linked by a chain for shoplifting. <laughs> Facebook was launched in 2004. Before then, it was impossible to know if someone you briefly worked with years ago liked the new Batman film or not. <laughs> OK, time for some more questions. Here are some members of the public being interviewed for a documentary in 2005. What are they slagging off? Yeah, I wouldn't buy it ever. I just couldn't walk around in it, cos everybody gets labelled who's wearing it. We're from Sheffield and everybody at home wears it. Wears it. A bit thug life, are they? <laughs> Chaps wear it. And uh, would you wear it? Yeah, I'm a chap. <laughs> OK, so what were they slagging off? Mm. Okay, what, what, what was it? Chaps so what were they, wear it. What, what were, were chaps wear wearing in 2005? What were they slagging off in that documentary? Uh, how did this man cause bad breath, nausea and constipation? <laughs> <laughs> and for our next question, it's over to Peter Andre. Hi, Jimmy, it's Peter Andre here. Now, you might not know this, but I do like a bit of highbrow literature, which is why the Da Vinci Code absolutely blew me away. Now, I know you've all read it too, but this question should be easy for you if you know the movie well enough. What was Professor Robert Langdon's profession? Didn't he say highbrow literature? Pretty highbrow, yeah. What? The Da Vinci? <laughs> well, we had the president reading My Pet Goat earlier, so it's all relative. We're very proud of Peter for getting through that book. <laughs> OK, you got answers? Yes. In yes. 2006, people started posting photos like these. What I want to know is what caused the damage to their TVs? Rhymes. <laughs> Dr Zeus put that one together. In 2006, yes, people started like posting these. photos like these. <laughs> What caused the, the damage, damage to their TV? TV. <laughs> <laughs> I think the answer's weird. Time for some answers. What are those people slagging off? Burberry. Ah, oh, oh, fuck. <laughs> I, I actually did say that. I, he yeah. did say that. Yeah. He I, said Burberry and you went for, you overruled him and went for... We went with chainmail in the end. Not chainmail, <laughs> chainmail after shave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the medieval perfume. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin and Alan, what did you put? But Burberry, you know, when, um, what's she called? Daniela Westbrook and she wore it all, do you remember that? What, like this, you mean? <laughs> yes, that's it, yeah. 
from wow. my head to toe wow. in uh, Burberry. Can yeah, I not get tights in it? <laughs> that is your question there. Not enough Burberry in that photo for yeah. you. <laughs> I wonder if you can get septums in Burberry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting some Burberry contact lenses. So that everything will appear Burberry? Yeah. <laughs> you did my for me. <laughs> we are now a double act. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. okay. How did this man cause bad breath, nausea and constipation? <laughs> Created a human centipede. <laughs> well, that would work, wouldn't it? What's the three? Created nausea, bad breath and constipation? And it does. It that's does. The, that's the guy right there. <laughs> my head was banging. <laughs> Sarah and David, what did you go for? I think it's because his diet made you stink. Is it Mr it? Atkins? Well, that is the exact right answer. <laughs> that is Dr Robert Atkins. <laughs> uh, Richard and Noel, did you get that? No. What did you put? With his big naan bread face. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Peter Andre asked you what the character Robert Langdon in The Da Vinci Code did for a living. Presumably you all got this. It was Jesus. His job was Jesus. He genuinely thought that. I said no, and he was like, no, no, it was Jesus. Because <laughs> he's from the Middle East. And... <laughs> Sarah and David, you went for? An archaeologist, Monk Pope. <laughs> something to do with the Pope in there and generally digging stuff up and... monks. <laughs> OK, not the worst answer we've got, because Richard and Noel... Telesales. <laughs> you thought the lead character in... <laughs> In the Da Vinci Code was in telesales. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go back over to uh, literary genius Peter Andre for the correct answer. Hi, everyone. The answer is, of course, that Robert Langdon's profession was a symbologist. You know, symbologist. A drummer. <laughs> what happened? Has anyone read the Da Vinci Code, have any of you? Get fucked. <laughs> it's not a bit aggressive. <laughs> I showed you some pictures of broken TVs. Uh, what do you think caused the damage? Erections. <laughs> That's just silly. <laughs> That's why I ceiling mount my TV. <laughs> OK. Sarah and David, you think the, the Smash TVs were caused by...? Dan and Yoghurt, because um, on the third picture there's a little pot of it and I thought maybe it was a clue. <laughs> Miss oh, Marple. Yeah, Kevin. Uh, I think this is the right answer, probably. We Nintendo Wii. The Nintendo. Did you have one of these? I did, and after about a month, I just get fed up. It's good at first, isn't it? You play a bit. Oh, that's me controlling that. Brilliant. Put the Xbox back on. Isn't it? <laughs> My brother's got one. He brings it around every Christmas. You know, all the family and stuff. So not only now I was growing up, I had my dad shouting, hey, "Kick it, you puff like that." I've got my dad now for every sport. Come on, it's it like this, and I'm like doing taekwondo and all that. <laughs> It's only one arm you're exercising as well, so you need to engage in other activities to balance it out a bit. <laughs> Don't worry about that, Kevin. I've got that covered. <laughs> OK, so no, Nintendo Wii was the, was the right answer. Uh, so one point to you. Uh, no points for Danone yoghurt or erections. How had, the, had people thrown the controllers at the screen in rage? No, no, there was just accidents. It was just they were playing the Nintendo Wii tennis or whatever they were playing, yeah. and it just slipped out of their hand and smashed their TV. <laughs> OK, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a very special treat for you now. Dragon's Den was one of the biggest shows of the noughties. Please welcome its brightest star, Duncan Bannatyne. Duncan Bannatyne there, one of the, the best dragon, clearly the best dragon. Absolutely, yes, thank you. <laughs> Does anyone want to pitch any ideas? Anyone got any ideas for the, for the den? You know, when you're in your car, you know, you've got your airbag. We're yeah. putting makeup inside it. So if you do have a crash, <laughs> <laughs> when the police come or the ambulance, you do look a bit near the mark. Do you know what I mean? Like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> An invention you play feel this. You're from Claybank as well. I am, Kevin. Yes. From the same area. And you're, you've got a Scottish accent. Maybe the thing that smokers can use and they put it to the throat and it speaks, maybe change into uh, <laughs> a voice a bit more like this. <laughs> so, a linguaphone slash tracheoptomy. You can just put an accent <laughs> in. <laughs> Bonjour. That's good. <laughs> Have they booed cigarettes? That's good, from Connery to Roger Moore in one go. Amazing. <laughs> David, have you got any ideas for, that you'd like to pitch to the dragon? We've got him here, no, we may as well. He doesn't like Dragon's Den. He doesn't think... like Dragon's no. Den? He said uh, it before, yeah. No, I'm I have not... said it, but I wasn't going to bring it up here. <laughs> 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 
I don't think it shouldn't be allowed. I just prefer Inspector Morse. Right. Duncan has got... OK, you've got a question for us. OK, here's your business-related question. Go on. So, I'm often asked about innovations, if they're going to be any good or if they're going to bomb. Now, the great entrepreneur, the Lord Alan Sugar, was asked about an invention in February 2005. And he says it'll be dead, finished, kaput, gone, within a year. What was that invention? Was it a thesaurus? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so Duncan asked the question, what did Alan Sugar say would be finished, gone, kaput within a year? What, what have you got? Uh, the year 2005 calendar. Wait. We thought it might be Twitter. Ah. Well, he's made up for it since he's always on there, isn't he? I oh, think. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, no. What did you say? We put MySpace and Facebook, so we couldn't remember it as one of them. We went for. I both. think it's MySpace. 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 Facebook. I think MySpace. <laughs> MySpace. MySpace. Book. My, what someone's nana would call the internet. MySpace book. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, well, tell us the answer. What was the answer? <clears throat> the answer was the iPod. Ah. So no one gets any points, but Sir Alan Sugar, the great Sir Alan Sugar, got it wrong and thought that would be just be, that would be gone. You can listen to what all I the mean, records you own and carry it around. It's really iPod. nice. To be fair, most people use iPhones rather than iPods now, where it, and so maybe he was right. Whereas the Amstrad emailer is as successful now as it ever was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see what that's done to the scores. Okay, Kevin and Alan have nine points. Sarah and David are in the lead with ten points, and Richard and Noel have two points. But we had two ages ago. <laughs> Another short break now. Just enough time for me to pitch my amazing new invention to Duncan. It's an app that lets you announce to your friends and family that you're gay. Interested? Yeah. <laughs> I was hoping he would say, I'm out, and I'd say, that's no good for you, but that has not worked. <laughs> See you after the break. Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz. This round is all about TV in the noughties. <laughs> Judy Finnegan's top fell open at the National Television Awards, revealing her breasts to the nation. Eagle-eyed viewers also got a glimpse of her arsehole, standing next to her in a tuxedo. <laughs> in 2005, the producers of Celebrity Love Island took the very best bits from reality TV, dating shows and celebrity culture, set them aside and made a dreadful TV show. <laughs> What Not to Wear made stars of Trini and Susanna, or as I like to call them, No and Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Let's remind ourselves what we were watching in the noughties. So check this. One. You're taking the piss, you know that. So I, uh, I turn round. Tina Miso! No idea what it is. I am trying to do my job. Doggy Miles, but permission to sneak. You need snooty fucking me. Yeah, eat some turkey. No, Jeremy, it's not my turkey. I'm eating dog leg. I have definitely reached a new low. <laughs> Ready for some big fat questions? Of course you are. OK. In January 2005, the BBC received over 55,000 complaints about a show before it had even been broadcast. What were people so up in arms about? 55,000 complaints. 55,000, before it was even on air. Taggart isn't a BBC show. <laughs> Taggart is not a BBC show. Okay. No, that is, that is correct. Have you got an eye patch on? No. <laughs> <laughs> are you doing this to mess up the continuity of the show? <laughs> OK, no. all right, so the noughties was a decade of reality TV, so here's a question from one of the genre's rule-breaking retrobates. It's nasty Nick Bateman. Hello there, Jimmy. As you might remember, my appearance on the first ever Big Brother ended rather abruptly when, how shall I put it, I was a complete bastard. But what phrase did I use in the diary room whilst describing my various transgressions? <laughs> 
So he wants to know what uh, what phrase did he use in the diary room? I don't have a clue what he said. I don't know, we've put nothing. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Dale Winton was the face of which television test of endurance <laughs> in 2001? It ran for four days, that's the clue here. It ran for four days. Oh, test of endurance. Do you think, has that sofa been sort of made the, exactly the right length for him to oh, sit on it like that? <laughs> <laughs> Time for another guest question, this time from the first and best singer to emerge from TV fame contests in the North East. It's Gareth Gates. Hey, Jimmy. My career was launched by the first series of Pop Idol, where I beat Darius Dinesh. But Darius became notorious thanks to his first ever audition piece. Can your teams tell me what he did that was so extraordinary? What was so unique about his performance? What was... Oh, what did he perform? That's Darius. what made it unique. It was Darius. <laughs> he is unique. <laughs> yeah. Why have you done up your jacket and you've got an eye patch on? What is going on with you? <laughs> He's an experienced quizzer, and he knows that... At this point. ..in the long, <laughs> it's best to button up. <laughs> have you all got something for that? Wait there. Yeah. Have you got something, Richard and Noel? We've got a lot. A whole... We've got a load of junk. <laughs> Are you ready for the answers? I asked you why BBC Two received 55,000 complaints. What did you put? Was it songs of motherfucking praise? <laughs> <laughs> is it still on, songs of praise? Is it oh, still yeah. on? I haven't seen it for it... a while. <laughs> well, I don't it's know... Like, it could have been on, though. I could have just been sort of facing slightly that way. And I went... <laughs> so, I can tell you it's not songs of praise. Oh, um, shit. Uh, Richard Noll, what have you got? That is the handwriting of a chimpanzee. <laughs> <laughs> It's been, it's been a hell of a quiz. It's taken a lot out of me. <laughs> but Jerry Springer, the musical, where's the opera? I think it was more of a musical as well. I will, mm. I will give you that. You, Sarah and David, you've gone for? Jerry Springer, Jerry Springer the, the opera. opera. I've not seen it, but from what I hear, it's more of a musical. In a way, the name of a sort of biscuit is Jaffa Cake. <laughs> <laughs> Although, actually, a Jaffa Cake isn't a biscuit, it is a cake. They, yeah, they had a because court case. They had a court that. case yeah. because you don't get VAT on cakes and you do on chocolate biscuits. Don't and, talk to me about tax, and the custom... <laughs> <laughs> I've got my own problems. Well, no, but it's <laughs> actually true. It's, it's legally a cake and it doesn't attract VAT. Can you make yourself legally a cake? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think possibly if I get myself filled with cream, yeah. <laughs> Is that what your accountant makes you do? <laughs> <laughs> if you say that, Jimmy, the nation will forgive you. <laughs> OK, Nasty Nick asked you what phrase he used in the diary room. Did anyone remember? Kevin and Alan, you put... Nangashing. <laughs> I couldn't even think. It's about ten years ago, love. <laughs> <laughs> it is about ten years ago. That's very much the nature <laughs> of the Big Fat Quiz of the Nordics. I really should have pointed this out. I should have made this clear at the top of the show. OK, what did you put for this, Richard Noll? Help me kill again. <laughs> <laughs> nasty, you It's called nasty because yeah. he cheated a little bit in Big Brother. Right. Did he I cheat? I watch it. How can you cheat in Big Brother? He oh. wrote other people's names that were in the house on bits of paper to suggest, so let's what? all vote for them. What, and he's got... A, he's called Nasty he's called Nasty Nick because from, of that. now on for Even that. Goebbels isn't called Nasty Goebbels. <laughs> Sarah and David, what have you...? We've just got, I'm sorry for being a twat. <laughs> I, I think you, none of you have got it, but I think you'll recognise it when you're here. Let's go back to Nick. Um... I've made a mistake. But, like all things, if you, uh, if you live by the sword, you die by the sword. He didn't come up with that phrase, did he? <laughs> no, but he did use it in the diary. Well, he just said it. All right, but I go sit to one and a half a dozen of the other, but no one remembers me saying that when I did <laughs> back in 2003. I remember that. <laughs> OK, more quiz. Um, I asked you which televised test of endurance was fronted by Dale Winton in 2001. What did you put? It was like, no, a game you had to put your hand on a truck <laughs> and drive was still... That was the game. Do you remember Dale Winton, yeah, Channel yeah, 5? Yeah. And it was whoever was on, <laughs> had a hand on the truck for the longest time. That is the correct answer. <laughs> Hang on, you, Sarah and David, you've gone and touched the truck and... Well, just in case, cos Supermarket Sweep was, like, a bit of an endurance test to watch. <laughs> <laughs> so, I just thought I'd hedge me best. <laughs> OK, and, and Richard, I know you probably got this. 
We just wrote, I can only see out of one eye. <laughs> it's a game where you bring on people and they're blind in one eye, then you put an eye patch on them and you have to work out whether they can see or they can't. <laughs> There's a lot of holes in the floor and they move the furniture around. <laughs> it didn't last very long. A bit longer than truck touch. <laughs> well, I can tell you, Dale Winton fronted Touch the Truck. And very dramatic and exciting it was too. Let's have a look. It's not just physical exhaustion that takes its toll on the touchers. Sometimes they just forget the rules. Have a look at the evidence. Because if you took my hands away, I'd go... Don't tell me. Whilst arguing with fellow contestants about the no leaning on the truck rule, Debbie broke the ultimate rule. She stopped touching. One of the referees has noticed that you've taken both hands off of the it vehicle at some point. Time. I'm afraid I'm going to have to disqualify you. Unless you need the red card. If you'd like to come on in there. It's clear to say she didn't touch it. Could you lie underneath it? Because I'm pretty sure if I lie down, my arse would touch a part of it. <laughs> and then I wouldn't have to do anything. I mean, or you could just get in the truck. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just sit in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, OK. Gareth Gates wanted to know if you could remember Darius's audition on Pop Idol. What did you put? Well, was it when he went, Baby, hit me one more time? <laughs> I just got that he, he, he sang, Hit me, baby, one more time, badly. Well, I mean, that's very much... That's a, that's a... fact. <laughs> that is a fact. Uh, Richard and Noel? Well, Richard wrote, Why did you take my other eye? And I, I said, come on, let's just actually write Britney Spears. <laughs> well, let's, let's have a look. Let's remind ourselves and everyone, just be aware this is not pleasant to watch. Give me, baby, one more... <laughs> baby, hit me one more... OK, time for a special bonus round about movies. I'm going to show you pictures from three of my favourite movies of the North East, which have been subtly improved. Can you name the films? Here's the first one. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so write them all down on one screen. So what's that movie? No, that is the... No, I just heard you say, why are we even bothering? Because you could win this. You know you could. Come on. Jimmy, what are the current <laughs> scores? I'll do the scores in a minute. No, 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 no. Just... Jimmy, don't, don't fall me off. What are the current scores? <laughs> 11, 13, 4. Okay, so we might as well go. <laughs> no, you can, you can make it up. How? Because there's a massive question that is worth 15 points at the end. Really? really? Are you being Genu serious? No, genuinely. True? Okay. Is that true? Jimmy, that's genuinely like... true. Jimmy, is that really Jimmy, don't true? Lie to me. I'm not lying to you. Jimmy. Is that true? It's genuinely Jimmy, true. Not lie to me. I will Jimmy. not lie to you. <laughs> Jimmy, is that true? I'll give you this eye patch if that's true. That is true. <laughs> you patch. probably look good in an eye patch. I'll see. I have a feeling I will look like a baddie from Captain Scarlet. <laughs> I imagine it's going to suit me now. Is that...? <laughs> Mr Bond, who's been expecting you? <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, second movie. <laughs> OK. And the third, and perhaps my favourite... <laughs> Jimmy, is that your accountant? OK, has everyone got something? Yeah. All right, let's have a look, see what you put. Gladiator. Yeah. <laughs> they like. kill Bill. OK. And then broke... Is it broke... It's broke back, back, back mountain. Oh, like as if you broke. don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was stunt doubling. <laughs> I had an audition for that film on Hampstead Heath about a year after it came out. <laughs> <laughs> they never called. <laughs> <laughs> they never do. <laughs> Still, it's nice to see you again. Um, yes. <laughs> Sarah, David, you got them all? Yeah. Yes. Kill Bill, Stroke Jim, Breakback Mountain, Gladiator. OK, uh, Richard Knoll, Gladiator, I could see. Kill Billy. Near enough. Breakback Bum Bum. <laughs> I think we can give you a point for Breakback Bum Bum. <laughs> we watched this at home, and <laughs> we, I couldn't understand what they were saying, cos it's quite a thick accent, and so I had subtitles on. And when it gets to the first scene where they have sex, the subtitles just say moans <laughs> for about two minutes. 
yeah. you could have misinterpret moans, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah. just moaning about the so go, Oh, this is rubbish. Oh, not <laughs> this again. <laughs> you get your oh. dick out of my ass. <laughs> OK, let's take a look at the scores. Uh, Kevin and Alan have 14 points. Sarah Milligan and David Mitchell have 16 points. They're in the lead. Richard Iwadi, Noel Fielding, seven points. Yeah. Quite a lot to do. <laughs> right, we're going to take a quick break now uh, whilst Joe entertain with some short films about bleach, crisps and feminine bloating. Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of the Naughties. In this round, I'm going to be asking you questions about sport. Tiger Woods' golf career suffered a setback after it was revealed that he had extramarital affairs with up to 120 women, although he only actually cheated on his wife three times. <laughs> once with a porn star, once with a hotel employee, and once with 118 waitresses. <laughs> In the noughties, Paula Radcliffe emerged as our most successful distance runner. Knowing she had two young children and yet competed in marathons at the very highest level really brought home to me just how lazy most mums are. <laughs> OK, all right, some sporting questions for you. Fabio Capello was installed as the new England manager in 2007. What did he ban players from doing in order to improve performance in the World Cup? And I can give you a clue, it did not work. <laughs> so we should be thinking about stuff that doesn't work. Stuff that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. Well, Kevin, like do you remember this? Lady. You got it? Got it. You got it? Of course you got it. I okay. got it. Yeah, Time for a Say What You See puzzle. I'm going to show you some pictures that spell out a sentence. Here's an example. Oh, no. All right. That's, uh, that's Kevin Bridges there. Oh, uh, I see, yeah. It's me? Yeah, that's Kevin Bridges. Oh, Kevin Bridges. Oh, OK. It's, it's actually Kevin Bridge Bridge. Oh, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Bridge Bridge is what I call him. It's yeah. like our pet name. <laughs> um, OK, these pictures spell out a sporting headline from the noughties. Just say what you see. Oh. Uh, what? Is it again? Just. Say what you see. I know, but what's it meant to be? I'm not going to tell you what it is. No, what, what's the subject matter? What is it got? Is Sport. it <laughs> Well, that hasn't helped at all. like that, Sarah. Sport. <laughs> and for our next question, it's over to Dance Supremo, Arlene Phillips. Hello, Jimmy. Now, being a professional choreographer, I use terms like jeté, plié and arabesque all the time. But I want your teams to tell me in what athletic discipline would you use moves such as the tic tac, the landing roll, and the cat leap? Sport. What kind of sport? Okay. Is that? Would you like a yeah, clue on that? Yes, yeah. please. Okay. It was popularised in the Bond movie Casino Royale. Darts. <laughs> there was not a dart scene in Casino <laughs> Royale. Ah, oh, Mr. Bond, <laughs> you you have to throw a double. <laughs> OK. Who managed to set a new world record after spending 71 days crying in the B&Q? Crying in the B&Q? In the B&Q? Yeah. Not Is that the B &Q. main B&Q? There's more than one B&Q. <laughs> it was the B&Q. It was the name of a thing. Was this a year before a second branch had opened? <laughs> what do you think it is? OK, have you all got something? Yeah. Do you know who it is? Yeah. Uh, some answers. Fabio Capello was installed as England football manager in 2007. What did he ban players from doing in order to improve their performance in the World Cup? Spit roasting. <laughs> you thought they were banned from <laughs> spit roasting? Yeah. <laughs> it was something to do with sex. It was a yeah, sex yeah. ban. Oh, sorry, as opposed to spit one. roasting. Next just sex. in their rooms, just... Oh, we've got a carvery going. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> What did you go for? You went for go golf lessons. <laughs> Just doing other sports in general. It would, it would confuse them. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't he look a bit like what you think I look like when I'm older? <laughs> you wish. <laughs> and you've gone for Richard and Noel. Sexy times. <laughs> Sex. Do it with the. Sexy time. Whoa. <laughs> Do you want subtitles? Sex. Uh, well, the answer is he banned players from bringing their wives and girlfriends or wags. That is sex, what he's talking about. He's not banning them from hanging out. Well, I think sexy times is devilishly close. Sorry, you're saying these are England footballers? You're saying that they exclusively have sex with their wives and girlfriends? <laughs> That's not what I read. <laughs> That's a very good point, well made. OK, none of you got it right, no points. Hey, come on, don't listen to him. I asked you to say what you saw. So, no, what did you think? What yeah, did you see? England Ashes victory. Have that, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, OK. Uh, Sarah and David, you got that? England yeah. Ashes victory. That? OK, and Kevin and Alan, what did you put? Britain, lips, lips, Vic Rosette. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, it's a good answer. It's not, that wasn't a big sporting headline. Yeah, but you did say, office. say what you see, and that's what I saw. <laughs> so can I speak to your supervisor, please? <laughs> Got a <laughs> <laughs> OK. Arlene uh, Phillips asked you which sport had moves including the tic-tac, the landing roll and the cat leap. Did anyone know this one? I couldn't think of the name. It's when they jump off buildings and stuff. Suicide. Thanks, <laughs> 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 I couldn't quite remember. <laughs> 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 that is called suicide, yeah. Yeah, I knew it was something. Suicide. OK, and you've got David and Sarah? Is it free running? And Richard and Noel? Yeah. This is a fact. Yes, it was free running or parkour, it's also called. Parkour. Are we supposed to believe from that picture that he's actually hanging from that bridge? Because he looks too big. Okay. Who managed to set a new world record after spending 71 days crying in the B and Q? <laughs> Richard and Noel, what have you put as your answer to this question? Your mum. <laughs> Was it your mum? <laughs> no, seriously, was it your mum? I feel like a supply teacher at a rough school. <laughs> Sir, it it's was so your mum. girl in your head and look at the card. Does it say your mum? No, seriously, though, is it your mum? <laughs> I saw your mum in B&Q, so... <laughs> <laughs> Sir. By the <laughs> garden furniture. <laughs> She's like bawling her eyes out by the garden furniture. No, sir, I didn't no, see her. I did see, I did see her. It's your mum. She was by the garden that furniture. Was your she was getting the real cheap shit as well. <laughs> that was your mum, yeah. They're being really mean to me. They're bullying me. I that don't was like your it. Mom. It was your mum, though. So when's, <laughs> so when's Mr. Rogers back? Because he's like a good teacher. <laughs> Mr. Rogers isn't coming back. He's dead. <laughs> did your mum kill him? <laughs> I heard your mum killed him during sex. <laughs> Sarah and David, what have you put? We, it's just a guess. We put, yeah, Henry the Seventh. <laughs> Quite often, Henry the Seventh is an answer to a question. <laughs> Quite often. Who won the Battle of Bosworth Field, for example? Was not the question. <laughs> no, but if it, that had been the question, this would be the correct answer. So, in many ways, is it the answer that's wrong or the question? <laughs> Oh, let's go finally, a bit of sense. Alan Carr, Kevin Bridges, what have you put? Well, we got angry and went, who gives a shit? <laughs> I'd try to rate Ellen MacArthur. And I went, don't. <laughs> I'm going to give you a point for that. That is the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen MacArthur set a new world record after crying for 71 days in the B&Q. Is that B&Q there? And she's cried so much that it looks like the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> it's not <laughs> Time for another bonus round now. This is, incidentally, my favourite question in the Big Fat Quiz of the noughties. It's a brilliant question, OK? Ooh. In the noughties, there was a brief craze for singing novelty taxidermy with products such as Travis the Singing Trout, Lucky Tom Turkey and Rocky the Lobster. But what was the name of the biggest-selling singing novelty taxidermy of the noughties? <laughs> <laughs> I need the exact name. <laughs> what did you go for, Kevin? Billy Bass. Billy Bass. Great question. It was a good question, wasn't it? Yeah. It's a good question. Uh, and then you've got... <laughs> Billy the Bass. The Bass, cos we think that Bass is actually what he was rather than his surname. <laughs> You're saying fish are less formal than we'd first thought. Th they are less formal. <laughs> <laughs> OK, and you've gone for Richard and Noel? Billy Bass. And then you've written... Your mum's real name. <laughs> <laughs> to protect you. <laughs> Thank you. OK, well, I can tell you the answer uh, was uh, Big Mouth Billy Bass. So the fish does have a surname? <laughs> yes. Does the fish have a title? Is he Mr. Mr. William Bass? Sir. Actually, he was made a sir. Fish. Sir William. Well, you're going to feel like an idiot because he's here. <laughs> and you'll feel like a fool. Uh... Is that yours from home? <laughs> Does he sing? Oh. Imagine that would be very entertaining for nearly a minute. <laughs> well, time for another quick look at the scores. Kevin and Alan have 17 points. Sarah and David are in the lead with 20 points. Richard and Noel have 11. Catching up. <laughs> well, we're going to take a few minutes to chill out to the smooth and funky sounds of Big Mouth Billy Bass. See you in three. <laughs> Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz. 
Our final round is all about people, the movers and shakers of the noughties. Pop icon Madonna turned 50 in 2008. She may have been 50, but she had the body of a man half that age. <laughs> Sarah Palin embarrassed the Republican Party when she ran for vice president. I'd like to be clear that I'm not calling Sarah Palin an idiot. She's an ignorant, fascist, gun-toting half-wit, but an idiot. Yeah, probably. <laughs> OK. Final round. Uh, have a look at this picture. Who is this man, and why did he have more friends than you in the noughties? Mm. OK, have you got something for that? In the noughties, David Blaine captured the public imagination with a series of incredibly pointless stunts. Can you name three of them? Um, what's it called? Um, Trump Tower. Um, what's it called? OK, have you, got, have you all got three? Yeah. Time for another guest question. Over to noughties it girl extraordinaire Tara Palmer Tomkinson. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, everybody. In 2008, socialite Paris Hilton took the unusual step of launching a reality TV series to recruit a new best friend. But what catchphrase did she use to dismiss unsuccessful candidates? So Paris Hilton had a TV show where she had to find a new best friend and when she got rid of people, yeah. Yeah. she used a catchphrase. Well, what have you written that for, you Egypt? No, that's not apparently. That's not right, a You're the Hilton in this no. duo. I'm Nicole Rich. No, <laughs> OK. For the next question, we go over to the Big Fat Quiz Masterpiece Theatre, where Charles Dance is reading from the autobiography of one of the decade's biggest stars. Whose literary masterpiece is this? Chapter 13, Poptastic. I drove back into central London, parked the car, and squeezed myself into my party outfit. Thanks to my blacked-out windows, there was no chance of anyone leering in. I went for the full-on, glammed-up look. A fitted black jacket with nothing on underneath, except a wonder bra, which, of course, gave me the most sensational cleavage. Tight black trousers and heels. I was ready for some serious partying. Before long, I managed to locate a group of girls, and we were soon joined by Bobak from another level. We were all chatting away when my attention was caught by a handsome, dark-haired man in a well-cut cream suit. He walked past our group and looked straight at me. I felt a jolt of excitement. He was gorgeous, and I recognised him. It was Dane Bowers! <laughs> Charles Dance there, and what we want to know is what autobiography did we force him to read? <laughs> OK. Uh, Why did Transport for London issue a statement in 2007 saying they were staffed by professional cleaners, not professional art critics? Oh, I know this one. <laughs> David is suggesting the answer might be because that is true. <laughs> Are you saying that isn't the answer? That is true. Surely that's going to be part of the answer. Well, it's true. Unless you're saying they were lying. They were they not. are, in fact, staffed by professional art well, critics, and they put that statement out to conceal that bizarre <laughs> truth from the wider public. Yes, Brian Sewell does all the cleaning on the tube. It's a little-known fact. <laughs> I'd love to see Sewell with a J-cloth. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. <laughs> I've up and down the Jubilee line like all day. fucking day. <laughs> OK, and some answers? We all got something? Yeah. yeah. I asked you, who is this man and why did he have more friends than you in the noughties? What did you put? Kevin. Kevin didn't um, like him. I think his name's Tom Anderson, but everybody else knows him as that. <laughs> I go on, what, what have you got? So... We've just called him MySpace Tom. Well, that is, that's pretty good. Richard and Noel, you got this as well? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I can tell you it was Tom Anderson and he founded MySpace and you automatically became his friend when you joined, so he had 100 well million friends in the noughties. OK, so points all round there, OK. I asked you to list uh, three stunts by David Blaine in the noughties. What did you put? Um, I think he was suspended in a glass cage above the Thames, is that right? Yeah, it was one of, one of, the, one of the best moments, I think, was uh, like, literally half an hour in, someone got a golf ball <laughs> and a golf club and set up on the bridge and was just firing balls at the dude. <laughs> the British public, God love him. What have you got? We've got in a box, in ice, <laughs> on a plinth, and then there was one at Trump Tower that they called the Twat Dangler. <laughs> but what did you go for, Richard No. Ice. Times. Ice times. <laughs> Ice times, OK. Glass cube. Glass cube. Cards. He did some cards. That's not a stunt, though. He just did cards. <laughs> he did that he card did thing that. where he threw it and it was on the other side of the glass. Yeah. That's just that's a trick. That's amazing. How does he do that? No, that's, that's better than being in a cube for a month, isn't it? <laughs> Rockabies was right, stood on top of a 100-foot pole, uh, sat in a box over the Thames, held his breath underwater and hung upside down. 
Those, those were the pointless things he did. So, David and Sarah get a point. <laughs> Tara Palmer Tompkinson asked you what catchphrase Paris Hilton used to dismiss rejected candidates on her reality show. What did you put? Tough titties. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine getting out of a car with no knickers on. Tough titties. <laughs> It's alive. Yeah. Okay, what did you go for, Sarah um, David? We've got your worth more. <laughs> oh, Richard Noel, what did you put? I think Noel thought I was saying this to him and that's why he got upset. What did you write? I'm not your friend and never will be. <laughs> you thought that's the pithy catchphrase she came up with. There's no room, but no. I was gonna write that's the last time I iron your pajamas. <laughs> She used to say TTYN and then talk to you never. So she would, it was pointless. Make it clear that you said wasn't it wasn't shortening, it made the whole thing longer. It really did, yes. <laughs> Charles Dance read us a slice of pure literary gold. Did you get the author? Yes. yes. Okay, it was well... from The Long Walk to Freedom by Nelson Mandela. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who, whose autobiography did you. Well, we thought he was delivering it with such gusto that maybe it was Charles Dance's autobiography. <laughs> He did enjoy it, didn't he? He did enjoy it, it but also actor. we've written Katie Price because we think that's the real answer. Katie Price, and you, you've gone for... Katie original? Price or Philip Schofield. <laughs> <laughs> His, own, His book. own book. We thought that too. Yeah. Because yeah. by okay. the end, it really, he looked like he wasn't even reading it. He really made it his own. I mean, the... if, he, if it's from Katie Price's, he must be thinking, this is a fucking coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was Jordan or Katie Price if she's got a top on. <laughs> so I asked you why uh, London Transport were forced to issue a statement saying they were staffed by professional cleaners, not professional art critics. What did you get? I, I thought that maybe they found, like, a Picasso on the tube and... I don't know, but listen, I don't know. <laughs> OK, uh, Sarah and David, you put... Did they clean a Banksy off a wall? That's the question. Go on, what did you put? We put wiped away a Banksy. It's just a guess, though. Yeah. They cleaned up Banksy graffiti valued at £300,000. <gasps> that is the exact right answer. <laughs> I love that one. Yeah, it's in Shoreditch, isn't it? I didn't even notice that had gone. <laughs> OK, it's time for the final question of the Big Fat Quiz of the Noughties. And to ask it, my two favourite stars of the decade, ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for the Cheeky Girls. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Very nice Hello, to meet you. Very nice to meet you too. I would ask which one's which one. Gabriella. Gabriella. Monica. 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 Oh, Monica. <laughs> well, you give me a brilliant excuse to stare at your boobs. Fabulous. <laughs> this is the original T-shirt from the Cheeky Song, which is ten years ago. Give, come just on, about, give us twelve. Just about. I could, I, could, I could touch your bum because that is life. No, apparently. you can't actually. <laughs> We've got a final question. Okay, okay, so we would like to name you three things. What were the highest grossing movie, the best selling novel, and the biggest selling album of the noughties? And I'm just going to quickly say two points each and a bonus of ten points if you get all three of them right. And I will say the movie is not Avatar because it came out very late, 2009, made all its money in 2010. It's not hard, especially the first question is so easy. Well, that's because you've got the answers, though. <laughs> OK, oh, you've got something. Right. Yeah. OK, so, so Kevin Allen, what do you think? Uh, the movie, Lord of the Rings. Okay. Okay. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Yeah. And Amy Winehouse is back to black. OK, Sarah and David, you went for...? Um, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone for the film, Da Vinci Code for the book, and Robbie Williams. OK, and you went for...? Harry Potter, Da Vinci Code. You fuck this up, Craig David. <laughs> oh. Hang on. Let's both take responsibility for what's happened what, tonight. For Craig David? <laughs> yeah, I think I we said have to. It wasn't Craig David. Okay, okay, okay so the film, the correct answer, it was Mamma Mia. Really? Yeah. Mamma Mia was the oh, highest shit. grossing film of the noughties. And the book? It was Harry Potter yes. and the Deadly Hallows. Get yeah, a point for Harry Potter. Oh. The best specially album, and this is a shocker. And the album, it was James Blunt's Back to oh, Bedlam. Yeah. Oh. Well, that's so you, Great Britain. Are like... you happy for that, Great Britain? That's what you did. <laughs> you proud of that? <laughs> that one? Yeah. <laughs> it's time for the final scores, and who better to give them than the voice of Naughty's television? In third place, it's Noel and Richard.
In seventh place, it's Kevin and Alan. But the undisputed winners are Sarah and David. A big thank you to our amazing panel, all our special guests, and thank you for watching the Big Fat Quiz of the Naughties. Good night. Hungry? Not surprised. It's been ages since we had a brand new Friday night dinner. But there's a whole new series next Sunday night at five past ten. Now, want to see what happens when Gordon Ramsay got one and Kirsty and Phil run a hotel? Yeah, me too. Hotel GB opens for business tomorrow at nine. Well, next tonight, Jodie Foster turns vigilante in our film, The Brave One.